Hi everyone, I'm George Farrar and welcome to the 85th and final episode of the History Jacksonville series on YouTube. I'm pleased to bring you our grand finale, the 100 greatest pictures and illustrations in Jacksonville history. To start, let's go back to the 19th century. Let's take a look at this picture. It's entitled Yankee Visitors in Jacksonville, Florida. Check it out, the, the folks, the people at that time, the, and it was a different time, okay? Jacksonville was really getting going in the latter half of the 19th century after the Civil War. Tourists were coming to town. People were uh, building businesses. Here we see a man at 161 Bay Street. Here we see, I believe this is also on Bay Street, and we see folks gathered for lunch. Uh, it was a very rough and tumble life on the riverfront, not like today, okay? But then, in 1901, the Great Fire of 1901 happened, and it was a big tragedy, and it devastated the city for a long time. People had to come from all around to help. And we see the newspaper of the time, the Florida Times Union and Citizen, uh, its headline Blair, Jacksonville devastated by a most destructive conflagration. And so there was going to be this big effort in the first couple decades of the 20th century to get Jacksonville back uh, and going again. And here we see a picture. It says, The Sunny South applauds President Roosevelt's assurance of a Panama Canal, Jacksonville, Florida. Now here, this is interesting. The notes I have on this is that this picture is of the red light district in Jacksonville in the early 20th century in La Villa. Notice the streetcar line, the rails for the streetcar. Now, I'm going to be showing you a couple pictures of old Fire Station 5, which was demolished in January of 2020. Uh, now, this is a picture shortly after it looks like it was built in 1910. Look at that, a horse-drawn fire truck. Now, I keep coming back to it. I'm going to keep coming back to it constantly in the early days of the 20th century of Jacksonville. But you see that an investment's being made in the early years to do streetcars. And this is going to help drive the growth of the early suburbs. Now, another factor that really drove the growth of Jacksonville and made things really great in the early 20th century was an architect named Henry J. Clutho, and he was influenced by Frank Lloyd Wright's Prairie School architecture, and so many buildings uh, were built uh, that were designed by him, including what is currently the City Hall, it used to be May Cohen's, the Cohen Brothers building, uh, called the St. James Building, behind, right there, behind the firefighters, is the St. James Building, designed by Henry J. Clutho. And in 1919, Jacksonville got a huge railway station called Jacksonville Terminal, otherwise known as Union Terminal. Some people call it Union Station. I, I have always been fascinated by this rail station. And it came online just as cars were getting to going. So you had all these cars going around the rail station, picking people up, dropping them off so people could catch the train to go all over the country. Air travel for passengers wasn't yet possible. Now increasingly people not only wanted to take the train, of course, they wanted to be able to drive their cars. And they couldn't drive their cars and trucks over the river until 1921 when City Commissioner Elmo Acosta convinced the people of Jacksonville to borrow the funds to build the St. John's River Bridge. It was named after him in 1949. Here we see the original rail span and the original road span. 
it was originally a toll bridge and here in this picture we see to the left the old 666 uh, building for the 666 cold medication um, factory and we see the streetcars we see the, the lines for the streetcar and we see a streetcar here so things are really getting to going in the 1920s if you think about it we had just built the road bridge uh, connecting uh, the south side uh, with downtown and we have these streetcars going around now you may not really recognize Jacksonville as much in this picture and that's what's unique in the distance you see the St. John's River Bridge later to be named the Acosta Bridge to the right in the distance you see the Hotel Mayflower you also see a tower that was um, torn down in 1940 it was a post office building okay so here we see the Hotel de Soto and Sunken Gardens and you get this fascinating this is why I want to do it in this format with you in our finale a fascinating view of the distance of the new rail span and the Acosta uh, back then I guess it's been the 1920s 1930s so here I believe this is around the time of the 1920s uh, and we're seeing downtown and look at the theaters look at the marble bank which was then Florida National Bank this would be this is the Laura Street trio and so you see all the coming and going definitely a height in Jacksonville's growth and prominence happening in the 1920s Memorial Park would open up and so we have this amazing uh, park in Riverside uh, right on the uh, banks of the uh, St. John's River with beautiful sculpture. And we see Forsyth. It says Forsyth, a business street of Jacksonville, Florida. Still true to its name, isn't it? And uh, you get a chance to even see the crowd uh, on the street. You get a chance to see the cars and the prominent office buildings of the time and the traffic, right? Another view of the uh, old Florida National Bank building and the Lower Street Trio and in the distance, uh, towering over it, the old uh, Barnett Bank building. And let's go out to the beach for a moment, shall we? Everybody now you know they can just jump in their car and they can just go out to the beach and so this I believe would have been I'm guessing 1920s 1930s somewhere around there and look at the pier and then further in, inland of course going back to downtown we see the Cohen Brothers building the St. James building designed by Henry Clutho in the distance we see the bandstand we see the Confederate monument uh, we see the, uh, and, and it's a postcard, which there were some fascinating, colorful postcards. But with all this going on, there was the urgency of, of then, which would have then been the urgency of now, as we started to gear towards World War II. And Jacksonville, Florida was going to feature very prominently in this President Roosevelt in a motorcade at the Naval Base, uh, which was uh, coming online around that time. And this is a picture of San Marco, I believe, around 1937. And I guess here, if this is San Marco, you know, you're living the dream in the 1930s. You have the San Marco Theater. You have the Piggly Wiggly uh, grocery store, all these different uh, places. Uh, business is pretty big at this point uh, at Union uh, Terminal, Jacksonville Terminal. Uh, we still have... Passenger rail travel is still prominent, though uh, Imason Airport uh, has opened, so people have more of an option uh, if they choose to fly going into, the, going into the 40s and the 50s. And here in the 1940s, we see more of a prominence. You see more of the Gator Bowl is going to get bigger in the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s. Things are going to start to get uh, more prominent with the sports complex. Uh, and... I'll have more for that just for you in just a moment. Here we see the Main Street Bridge, uh, and you see it without the ramps, where you see where it's just, it comes off all at once into downtown. And you see the shipyards, these kind of, um, these piers, uh, 
And, you know, again, I think in the 1940s, this is, I believe, 1947, somewhere around there, uh, you get a different feel, I think, when you look at downtown. This is Main Street and Ashley, I believe. And you see Pilsner Bar and Grill, Rhodes Furniture in the distance, the sign in the distance on the uh, on that building there. And now here is something you may not often see. There's a lot of talk about the Annie Lytle School that still stands to this day. Uh, uh, it was also known as Riverside Grammar uh, School, known as Public School 4 uh, in Riverside. And at one point, it was in Riverside Park, and the park hadn't been obstructed by the... By the um, the expressway but times were changing so what you saw was what what it looked like as a school and uh, I guess it would be around the early 1950s somewhere now in the early 1950s we get the Fort Warren Bridge uh, also known as the Gilmore Street originally known as the Gilmore Street Bridge we get the Matthews Bridge here we see construction of the Matthews Bridge uh, and so uh, this was going to be uh, uh, part these two bridges were going to be part of a massive expressway system that the city of Jacksonville and the state of Florida committed to building through an entity called the Jacksonville Expressway Authority and they would put up toll booths they were building these bridges and these bridges were the vital links in the expressway system and they were going to build in the 1950s they were building expressways downtown in Arlington to link up Arlington with downtown to go across the Matthews and here you see off of Arlington Road not far from where I would live in the late 1970s early 1980s is a picture in the 1950s of the Arlington Theater and I once saw a movie in the Arlington Theater many years later as a kid living in Arlington now this was the Jacksonville of the early 1950s and this had to have been an exciting time. And I, I chose this picture as one of the main theme pictures for the History Jacksonville series because I was so impressed by it. Here you see the original Fort Warren Bridge. Across the river, we see the new Prudential skyscraper. We see what ultimately became Baptist Medical Center, Wolfson's Children's Hospital. We see that Interstate 95 South hasn't even been constructed yet. We can see the Acosta Bridge and the rail span in the distance we can see the Main Street Bridge otherwise known as the John T. Alsop Jr. Bridge named after uh, one of the longest serving mayors of Jacksonville John T. Alsop Jr. We see the Hart Bridge has been built and we see the Matthews in the distance and in the 1950s we got ourselves a new Greyhound bus station it was only recently been demolished when a new one uh, was uh, constructed so, so much is happening, building towards so much, and in 1959, a lot was starting to happen with the new suburb of Arlington, and the Thunderbird Motor Hotel was constructed, really, really big, fancy resort hotel with a big restaurant with banquet facilities, people would have a lot of party celebrations there, uh, and had tiki bars, uh, things like that. Uh, and I remember that sign. It's things you remember. I, I can still remember that sign, how neat it looked in the early 80s. In 1956, rock and roll legend Elvis Presley performed in Jacksonville, but to do it, first he had to sit down and meet with the judge uh, to tell him, hey, you know, my performance is going to be clean. There was a lot of controversy at the time in the mid-50s with Elvis Presley shaking his hips, but in Jacksonville, they had to have a talk with him. Uh, so uh, that was what it was back then. And back then, this was before the city and the county consolidated. So there was actually a Jacksonville Police Department, and Jackson, the Jacksonville Police Department had their own Jacksonville Police Headquarters. This building actually still stands uh, today. Uh, and so a neat time if you think about it you know we were just the country was just emerging out of the Great Depression and World War two and so here we see five points in what I believe is the early 1950s in 1959 
there were two big developments that were going on. There was the Sears and Roebuck, the Sears store, uh, that built this huge, they built this huge store uh, as part of their chain of department stores uh, on the river. And so there's the dedication. And the Robert Meyer Hotel was also opened in 1959. And later on, it, along with the Woolworth lunch counter, encountered civil rights demonstrations as the nation began to go through the uh, efforts to provide civil rights to all Americans, including African Americans. Uh, also at this point in time, uh, Jacksonville was truly uh, a Navy town uh, and the focus, and still is to this day, but at the time uh, a lot was happening during the height of the Cold War. Senator John F. Kennedy came to Jacksonville in 1960 to campaign for president, for the, for the presidency. And he uh, is in this motorcade along with uh, Mayor Hayden Burns, future Mayor Lou Ritter, Senator George Smathers. Uh, and he's on his way, I think, I, it looks like to a rally that they uh, were having. And there was also, also I believe on the same day, Vice President Richard Nixon who was campaigning also for the 1960, uh, the presidency in 1960, he also spoke uh, at Heming Park. And so uh, there's a picture of him. Now, people wanted a lot more in Jacksonville, I believe in the 1950s and the 1960s. Here we have an old picture of the Jacksonville Zoo. And uh, also I have a picture of the of the elephants, which were the highlight of the zoo. One of them was named Chick after um, City Commissioner um, Elmo Acosta. And they managed to, I guess, procure an elephant. And And I remember that structure, the elephant, the elf, I guess you call it the elephant house. I remember, but when I was going in the late 70s, early 80s, it didn't look as nice, I guess you could say. And so that I, I, when I saw that picture, I was fascinated by it. Now, in the 50s and 60s, they start really pumping a lot of money and effort into development along the river. Now, this was civic development, building the Duval County Courthouse in the 1950s, dedicating the city hall. Uh, both of these structures have now been demolished. Uh, they dedicated this new city hall in 1960. The courthouse had been built in around 1958, along with a jail. Uh, so it was a civic century, I guess you could say, where people could go down and do everything from paying their taxes, go to a city council meeting, plead guilty on charges, plead not guilty on charges, or serve time in jail. <laughs> it was, it was one-stop shopping, but there was more to what they wanted to do. And so they constructed the Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Coliseum. And I always used to like to hear the radio ads, now at the Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Coliseum. <laughs> Tonight only, you must be there. <laughs> um, I saw tons of stuff at the Coliseum, including my high school graduation ceremony was held at the Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Coliseum in 1993. And there was circuses and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and for the more finer things in life, for the more finer performing arts in the 1960s, the city of Jacksonville also built itself the Civic Auditorium. So you would go to the Civic Auditorium for some of the off-Broadway, for the Broadway, kind of off-Broadway plays and the performances, concerts, symphonies, things like that. Uh, and here we see an early 1960s view of Jacksonville. So we have that Sears store, we have the Hotel Mayflower, we got the Civic Auditorium, we got the Main Street Bridge, but look on the South Bank. What do we got on the South Bank? Interesting, huh? So in the early 60s, we still had some pretty substantial downtown hotels, including the Roosevelt Hotel. I kind of found this picture to be really neat. Uh, and they had a rooftop, looks like a rooftop pool. And they had a parking garage and all sorts of, sorts of amenities. Now, unfortunately, though, in 1963, in um, 1963, there was a uh, fire, and it was the most tragic fire in Jacksonville's history. And so... Uh, the uh, people died in this in this tragedy. Now, ultimately, the Roosevelt Hotel eventually would become the Carling. 
So there was a lot of things coming at Jacksonville in the 1960s, including Hurricane Dora. And it impacted North Florida substantially. It, there were a lot of power outages, uh, flooding, water damage, wind damage. Uh, and it really, it really shook people up. Here, we see downtown Jacksonville. This would have been around where the Jacksonville Landing uh, was uh, when it was built later on in, in the 80s. So I'm kind of trying to give you an idea of where uh, this that point and <laughs> miss all that water was. Okay, and then, you know, so the St. James Building has become, uh, it was a Cohen Brothers store. It became May Cohen's. Uh, you have the charter, uh, well, we, I, we loosely call it the Charter Building. Now it's the JEA headquarters in the distance. That had a revolving restaurant, too. And in 1964, President Lyndon Johnson, running for re-election, he uh, gave a campaign speech in Hemming Park, across from the May Cohens. And you see how kind of different... They, they did, did some stuff with the front of the building to try to modernize things. So they really were trying to do a lot of mar modern architecture in the 60s. So it was about the new way, the new, the new age, and everything was coming together. We had a new central library, a new downtown library called the Hayden Burns Public Library. And here we see a nice street scene. Kind of neat, and it? it was brand new. Now it's a DuPont Center. I did my early reading, my early heavy reading, um, was done at the Hayden Burns Public Library in the early 1980s. And I would, at night, you would go there. And it, in some ways, it was almost impressive to go there at night as it would be even during the day. Big windows. I was intrigued, and still to this day, I'm intrigued by the, the design, the mosaics, the tile. We're back at fire station number five. I would say this around the 1950s, 1960s. So we see the firefighters and the fire equipment from that time. Fire station number five was located in the Brooklyn neighborhood off of Riverside Avenue. Now in this next picture, we see that Friendship Park has been built. We see the Main Street Bridge in the distance. We see the American Heritage Life Building. We see the City Hall. At the, of the time. We see the Duval County Courthouse of the time. And so there's really an effort to make the riverfront walkable, able to enjoy. And meanwhile, we have, of course, the sports complex. Not only would there be all these concerts, circuses, wrestling matches, baseball games, but there would be the, the Greater Jacksonville Agricultural Fair that I would visit. I'd visit with my mother and visit with my family. And I would visit with my mother and I would visit, I would have a lot of family time at the Regency Square Mall. Now this is when the Regency Square Mall opened in the 1960s. This was a big event for Jacksonville and a big event for Arlington. Uh, the suburb it really was a, a big huge shopping mall that opened uh, and I would experience it in the early 90s. Now not only in the 1960s were all these, all these developments happening, but the city and the county government uh, essentially merged. And here we have Mayor Hans Tanzler with actress Lee Meredith. She was performing at the Alhambra Dinner Theater, and they decided to go out there and do some publicity shots doing the uh, changing of the signs. Now, these were changing times. While they were changing the signs, the times, yes, the times they were a-changing. We see in this rail yard picture, really we kind of see the end of Union Station, Union Terminal, Jackson Terminal as a, as a, as a rail station. Uh, it w later on would become a convention center after being abandoned for a while. But we would see a lot of growth with the, the expressways, but we would also begin to see a lot of traffic, experience a lot of traffic on these expressways. And with the toll bridges, with the draw bridge on Fort Warren, there's people waiting to go on the Fort Warren Bridge. But, you know, even, even back then and you could go out to Jacksonville Beach. Uh, this was around 1973, I believe. And you could really enjoy enjoy things, drive out onto the beach. Uh, and looks like there was a, a lot going on that day. And downtown, you could shop at Sears. Uh, and they had the newly uh, built Atlantic Bank 
uh, building, uh, now the BB&T building. In the distance, peeking out in the distance, you, you have the, the old Barnett building, I believe, there, and then off to the right, the old American Heritage Life building. And But new skyscrapers are really coming, right? So you see the, the Atlantic Bank BB&T building under construction in this picture. And then you see the Independent Life building under construction in this picture. Now you would know it as the Wells Fargo Center, right? Just across from the river from Friendship Fountain. And you see the construction of the Independent Life building. Very much, in very many ways, the Independent Life building for me was the symbol of Jacksonville, downtown Jacksonville, the Jacksonville that I knew growing up as a kid of the 70s, late 70s, 1980s. And here we see somewhere near the what was called the Children's Museum. Now we know it as Moss, somewhere near there, a neat little place. These are some neat little places, I think. And we see these buildings now constructed. We see the river looking different. We see the opportunities maybe more at this time than maybe in prior past uh, or even now in more recent history where people could kind of get out and about and enjoy themselves. And this is the river run, okay, coming down the Main Street Bridge. A lot to see here. I, I like to say there's a lot to see in this picture, right? And there is. Take a look at it. People taking pictures and film of the run itself. The, check out the copper tone out on the right hand side, okay. Uh, so, Mayor Jake Godbold, he deserved a lot of recognition for what he did to make a lot possible in the 1980s for downtown Jacksonville. And so in a lot of ways, History Jacksonville and in various shows I've done uh, on this channel, uh, he um, gets a lot of recognition. Here he is at a rally at the Gator Bowl with uh, NFL owner Bob Erze of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, they flew the NFL owner in, and he was greeted by the mayor at this huge rally. So that was our, st we really had some efforts going. Now, speaking of efforts, we would have, of course, campaigners coming into the town to get votes, and Ronald Reagan shows up in 1980 to campaign in Hemming Park. And, you know, though, there's a lot that's going on, but if you think about it, we had issues with pollution. We had a lot more people complaining about the toll booths. And finally, in the late 80s, the toll booths went away for what they were uh, in where they were. Um, and But that was what I used to know there as a kid growing up. And here's another, um, another uh, I guess you could say, symbol of Jacksonville, the Maxwell House plant. It's been with us for so long downtown. The Regency Twin. I saw some great movies as a kid at a Regency Twin. Okay, so there are all these different places you could go. The town and country off of the Arlington Expressway. If you see that distance, you see off to the right, Thunderbird Restaurant Lounge. Okay, so these are some of the places, things I recognize. I remember a lot of the Mayport Jazz Festival. When the Jazz Festival went downtown to Metropolitan Park, when, uh, when the Jazz Festival also, in later years, performed in uh, Hemming Park. Uh, in various other locations downtown. So that's the Jazz Festival has spanned Jacksonville history for so long now. And another feature in our, our life, our cultural life in Jacksonville, that I remember distinctly and intimately, the Florida Theater, uh, revitalized in the 1980s, practically as a gift to the school children, it seemed like, of Jacksonville, because we would all fill, all the school kids, had to go downtown and, and see ballet, and, and, and in many ways you felt like, wow, they opened up this, this massive new theater for the people of Jacksonville, but the school kids get to enjoy it. And it's sitting there as a school kid, you know, I was, you know, Crown Point Elementary, I believe, at the time, and, and seeing this grand theater, there's something so amazing about that theater built in the 1920s. You know, life in some ways can be very challenging, right? We have the things like the River Run so people can get out and compete. We had places like the Jacksonville Landing where people could gather, shop, drink, have fun, hang out with some people, maybe have some place to take your relatives, uh, uh, your family from out of town, uh, or if let's say you're visiting, traveling, uh, going to see a game, right? Those special moments, right? Uh, a special moment, though, because sometimes you have these places in Duval County that are so 
you know, they're so different, distinctly different. The experience you might have, for example, back in the 80s when your father would pull the car out onto the ferry and you sit in the car and you just move across the river. I mean, really neat, really neat um, experience. And to watch the riverfront develop in the 1980s as a kid, the, the, the South Bank River Walk, this is the initial construction of it. And this was the Jacksonville that I knew of as I truly began to see the city and understand everything starting to come together as a, as a kid. Now, around this time in the 1980s, fire station number five, this is what the fire equipment, firefighters, what fire station number five looked like in the Brooklyn neighborhood off of Riverside Avenue in the 1980s. It was demolished in around, I believe, January of 2020. And... Here we see the Acosta Bridge before in the 1980s. We see an old city bus, those big, huge buses, loud, noisy, smelly, but, but you see them all over the place. And that, that road span demolished. The Automated Skyway Express, which was a lot of money was put into, and it kind of to be interesting to see where all that superstructure goes and what happens with it uh, over the coming years. But uh, I've, I'd have the opportunity to enjoy that and get some benefit off of it. Here's my favorite picture of Mayor Ed Austin. He was mayor for a term in the early 1990s. Here we see him in the old Gator Bowl. He was a man of great integrity. He was a longtime state attorney. He was elected mayor as a Democrat. He changed party affiliations to be a Republican, and he had the unique distinction of being able, as mayor, to celebrate, along with everyone else, myself included, to celebrate the big announcement that came from the National Football League that after all these years, Jacksonville's efforts to secure a National Football League franchise have been successful. And so the franchise was awarded. The team would be known as the Jacksonville Jaguars. The first NFL owner would be Wayne Weaver. And they would begin playing in a new stadium in 1995. And thus we have modern Jacksonville with all the different dynamics that resulted, of course. Now let's flash forward and we'll flash back. Let's flash forward to August of 2012. I'm running around downtown Jacksonville, and I've decided that I wanted to do a six-month series called History Jacksonville. And I have my first camera that I use for the series, a Kodak handheld that takes picture and digital video, and I snapped a picture of the Grand Banking Room inside the Marble Bank at Lauren Forsyth Streets. The Marble Bank is part of the Laurel Street Trio, the old Far to Life building, the Bisbee building. Uh, and uh, you see the Marble Bank, what people call the Marble Bank, in this show as Florida National Bank, when it was Florida National Bank. And I saw all of this great, unique architecture, a lot of places abandoned, no longer in what their primary function was, but still surviving in the Jacksonville urban landscape. And I decided I had stories to tell, pictures and illustrations to present. And so from 2012 to 2020, I did so. In this series called History Jacksonville. And now in the grand finale in this 85th and final episode of the History Jacksonville series, I'm here to tell you, thank you for your inspiration, your viewership, your insights, your comments, your appreciation, your thoughts about what I've produced. I've lived most of my life in Jacksonville. I moved to California in 2019. But I wanted to bring this finale to you no matter what, to bring you what I consider the, the greatest pictures and illustrations that I have of my collection.
from my collection. Of course, there's more from where that came from, and I'll have, from time to time on this channel, I'll have History Jacksonville specials. And uh, I'll continue our year-by-year -year series. And so let's take one last look at yesteryear Jacksonville. Let's look at what I have indicated in my notes as June 1962. And you see the cars and a truck coming off the Main Street Bridge, otherwise known as the John T. Alsop Jr. Bridge. They're headed towards Phillips Highway and towards the new interstate, I-95. In the distance, you see what was the Atlantic Coastline uh, Railroad headquarters. Later became the Seaboard headquarters. Later than, even than that, uh, what's currently known as is CSX headquarters. So, you see the early expressway system in the distance, if you look straight out, you see that the construction is underway on the Charter Building, uh, what would later be the JEA headquarters, uh, and it would have a revolving restaurant. So there was development happening, but of course the skyscrapers of today, you don't see any of that, right? I selected this picture as our last picture to show you that Jacksonville in many ways has been a work in progress and growth has driven the change and so we all we can do is look back at it and marvel and for those of us who lived it to have enjoyed it once again thanks for watching history Jacksonville series please check us out on Facebook all of our shows are at the left turn network.com the best is yet to come take it easy See you later.